All right, um, so let's get started with today. I have an exciting announcement for you guys. Um, let's head over to my website. So very, very first thing, if you want your stuff critiqued, go to istabrak.com. It's just my name.com. And you click on the Reddit icon here. This will take you to the heart of the community, the heart of this whole thing, which is where everybody goes to exchange information and it's like a busy stock market of art and everybody's sharing information about how to fix each other's work and people are sharing. It's just constant transfer of information and art communication. And it's just a beautiful place to be to get better at art. Um, and it's very active. Um, so once you're here, dance your eyes over to this little dude right here, which is our community challenge. Um, it's very, very exciting. Um, uh, but before I read it for you, uh, please consider joining as a $1 a month patron. It means the world when you guys uh, send your support this way. Um, and it's only a dollar a month, that's $12 a year for all of this educational content. Like imagine it's just $1 and I know you'll say, oh, the next guy will get it, the next guy will do it. Um, but it really doesn't work like that. Um, uh, uh, you know, that the community is all about togetherness and working together to keep it strong. You're basically providing for the community so it can keep providing for you. Um, and uh, it's definitely starting to get a little bit more um, noticeable how the YouTube algorithm and YouTube in general has treated my channel. So the, any support going my way really, really helps um, keep everything going, keep everything running smoothly. It may not run as smoothly as it used to when notifications used to go out and stuff, but um, it's definitely a, a step in the right direction to send some support our way. Um, and uh, you can do so through Patreon. So just click on the Patreon link right here and it'll send you over to my Patreon. You just have to join as a dollar. Um, and uh, it's just a watcher tier, and that's why I call it the watcher tier, because a dollar is really a small amount, um, and it sticks around longer than, let's say, a $20 patron. Um, uh, so if you guys want to send some support, I really appreciate it. Okay, so the design challenge is to design your winter familiar. So it is a holiday kind of winter theme, so it's seasonal, festive, but it's not really... Christmas related or anything like that. So it's all inclusive. Um, and as is with every community challenge, there are there are mixture, there are material texture requirements for the challenge. Uh, the twist of the familiar must be an elemental character, uh, familiar. So it must be made of the texture itself. The first requirement is that your elemental must be made of one of these textures. Um, so ice, rock, uh, twigs and branches, the rocks, there's different varieties of rock. Oh, I forgot to add the final one, I just put four. Um, twigs, branches, snow or cloud, any, any basically just winter. It's a texture study, an advanced texture study. Um, the second uh, requirement is that your elemental must have at least one glowing component to it. This may be a magical element. Um, so my patrons got a very similar assignment, but it's, it's a little bit more personalized. It's a little bit more of a personal journal. Um, theirs is, is, uh, is, is more introspective, um, but uh, you guys basically are doing a creature design. Remember, this is all about textures and material place, so really spend time looking at all the possibilities and varieties of these textures. Uh, basically, the order is imagine your familiar first, their personality, their spirit, and then choose one of the textures or material that represents them the best. This is their elemental quality. Finally, add that character to a wintry landscape, so it has to be a landscape painting. Uh, tundra, arctic, or snowy environment. It must be a dark, medium, uh, dark or medium dark landscape. <clears throat> Try not to paint. Basically, don't be basic about it. <laughs> Try to paint something a little bit more original. Try to paint something that has um, a bit more of like a natural material element to it. So instead of designing an owl that's made out of snow, try to design snow that has slightly shifted its shape into looking like an owl. Do you know what I mean? So it's the texture first. Um, so write that back to me. Texture first, shape after. That's why I said uh, find their personality, their spirit. What is it that makes this, uh, that represents them? Which, which texture represents them? Because it's the texture that comes first. And then obviously adding the, um, the landscape. So uh, I don't want to see any basic looking um, uh, 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 Patronus charms or anything like that, but definitely within the realm of it. 
Um, so you may add an animal human quality to it. Uh, for instance, this twig is just perfect. I just see this, I, if I was to design one, I would just work off of this. Um, it's made out of a frostbitten twig. So that would be what my um, texture uh, would be. And um, uh, so that's just kind of pushing the one texture. It's basically made of one of these textures, so twig and branches, but it's in the winter time. So essentially it's allowed. It's not made out of ice and twigs, like it's got an ice torso and twig arms. It's just made out of twig, but it's got a bit, a bit of frostbite on it, a little bit of frost and a little bit of crystalline um, ice just hanging out, catching the sunlight. Um, and uh, that's essentially what I mean by like pushing the human character aspect of it, not exactly painting a beautiful curvy woman made out of ice and calling it your familiar. Do you know what I mean? Because if you guys do that, I'm not looking at those pieces. Again, I repeat, I am not going to load them into the critique if you guys submit some kind of uh, ice princess, okay? This is not what it is. It's a texture that the element itself has turned into a personified itself for you. It's your familiar. It, it represents you. Um, and um, it's not a bare background illustration. It's not a vertical canvas. It's a horizontal canvas with a background character, light environment, and all. You're basically designing this this ice elemental, um, or this, sorry, this wintry elemental familiar um, in its environment. Um, and uh, and yeah, look at these reference pieces. So basically, I'm just showing you the raw, bare, unprocessed texture. Do you know what I mean? That's what I want to see. And one of my favorite examples, this is just an example of how you could include a glow aspect. Um, um, but uh, same thing here, how you could involve the glow in the dark environment. Um, but yeah, here is a nice little, uh, it's got a magical glowy element to it. So you can play around with the magic quite a bit. It's actually a very free reign concept design if you think about it. It doesn't have that many restrictions because you have a lot of textures to, cho to choose from and a lot of shapes to mess with. It doesn't have to be in the shape of any creature or familiar thing that we know. It just has to look like it's a being. Um, but yeah, look at how this ice is kind of shapeless and look how the ice here attaches to other little um, uh, snowflakes, sorry, snowflakes, um, and uh, how you could use that to show how the, ob how the embodiment of that character, the personification of it is, um, how it just, it is made of the texture but is in the shape of something familiar to us. Um, there's the, the, my favorite type of rock and different uh, options you guys can pull from for different colors. It doesn't have to be a blue. It can be a red ice creature type thing. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be strictly um, blue tones or anything like that. And then here's some more examples. This is a Patronus, and then this is a glowing jellyfish. So you have a lot of range between all of these, and a lot of fun to be had, and a lot of, you know, and just turn on some little wintry, howling winter storm music and just and feel it. You know, it's as if you're designing something that you wish would come to life. So I want this to be fun. I want this to be exciting. So have fun. And um, and uh, the winners will be just like last time. Um, uh, if it is, um, uh, where did my information go? Depending on the amount of submissions, there may or may not be the winners for this challenge. Um, because last time the class ran a bit long, and just because of my health, I'm trying to keep classes a little bit shorter. Um, so if the amount of submissions is, is within a reasonable amount and there is time enough for two mics, the winner of this challenge will sit with me and help me critique the pieces submitted. Um, and if there is no time for that, um, uh, I will still try my best to look at every single piece, hand it in, as long as it's within the, uh, the, the, the restrictions. Um, again, I really want to be more strict with the restrictions because it's about, it is about getting people to draw. So if somebody ended up drawing a curvy ice princess, good for you. You drew something and that's what matters. But also you have to learn and teach yourself how to work within restrictions. Uh, because if you want to work for people one day and you want to get hired for book covers and character designs and all of that, you have to learn to, to work within the rules um, and not bend them just to make you more comfortable. So that's the point of these assignments is to help you build your portfolios. Um, and it's free to join. You don't have to pay. You don't have to do anything. It's an option to join as a $1 patron. And if you want to join, patreon.com slash estabrack. So, lots of talking, but let's get into today's critique hour. So this is fan art, I believe, uh, for that new League show, which is okay. I've watched the first episode, I think. Uh, that was the first episode. But let's talk about what you've done so far with the perspective. Um, 
So we're, we're seeing some real issues here with the way the camera is in relation to this character. So what I'm going to do is that instead of just trying to convince you that you got your perspective wrong, I'm just going to use Portrait Studio um, to help you. Portrait Studio will go on even a bigger sale starting in December. So once, um, you know, once class has kind of come to a close, so the last class of the year will be, so basically this current challenge will be, will be done around the 16th. Um, I usually just hop off mid midway through December. I just take my winter break, um, and it is on the so the last day would be the 16th. So the 16th is typically when I start the big winter sale, which I let run into January. It is just basically Portrait Studio ends up going down to like nothing. So um, if you are a little bit struggling with the current price of Portrait Studio, it will go down. So hold, just just hang in there, and then you'll be able to get it for a lot cheaper. But this is Fortress Studio, it's available on my website. So let me show you what you got wrong. So let's say we're the camera, Jinx is over there. Or what did they call her, powder? Um, and, and, uh, and I'm just going to just set up the pose to be very similar to what you have. So she's kinda, kinda holding her gun. All right. And you have a lot of flexibility with uh, with the joints. So just because you can move things only in a certain way does not mean you're restricted to, you know, you can really explore the joints, make them very flexible. Anything you can move in real life, you can move on the model. Um, mostly, mostly, <laughs> within reason. And then I'm just going to figure out what the heck you was trying to do with that other hand because I don't understand it. So you were trying to make it look like she was holding on to this so the arm is actually this long like what it what were you doing you know that's huge <laughs> this arm is gigantic um so let's try to see what you know, again again i'm not going to try to convince you uh, let's just see what portrait studio does maybe i'm wrong all right and then she's holding on to the gun in this way. So we would see the other hand. We would at least see it breaching through this way. And then she is kind of rotating her body like eh. And then she's kind of throwing her chest up this way. And then finally she's tilted her head that way and up and over, kind of leaning on her sister for, for support. I did not know Jinx and Vi were were buddies. I did not know they were family. Um, so that's news to me. All right. And then uh, I think I got the most of it. Okay. So let's take this baby over there. You can take screenshots with Por Portrait Studio here, but I just usually use a green shot just because I can crop it right on the spot. And let's talk about what you did. So I'm just going to draw some basic construction lines and let you decide what you did wrong. All righty. Okay, um, so my, <clears throat> my tablet scooched over. Alrighty, so, okay, so my tablet is being very finicky right now, so give me a second. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, okay, so I'm going to get my basic pencil brush. Everybody ready? And I'm just going to draw some construction lines. Top of breast, top of breast, top of shoulder, top of shoulder, neck, neck. All right. So let's just, let's just, just these alone. All right. Just these alone are revealing something very important. What is it? You can see how it starts to open up. That's because of the foreshortening. That's because the camera is now level with the knees but the chest is higher than the camera because we really lowered the camera with this angle shift here. So let's jump back to your girl. I might not look at that one today. Let's see what you did. Drawing the same lines. All right. Oof. And then we've got the um, gigantic arm right there. I'm just gonna exaggerate it because I just feel like being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, and then the chin. Well, actually, that's not even the top of the shoulders. 
Uh, this is the top of the shoulder. So you got an extreme angle there, my friend. Okay. And then what we're going to do is find the symmetry line of the chest area. So this is a really important line to find. If you don't find it, you're going to basically have a really difficult time um, identifying the shift, basically how thin the far side is and how big the front side is. Because remember, it's not equals. This side of this half of the body is not the same width as this half of the body. Um, that's only with front view. All right, so we're gonna try to find that symmetry line here. It's hard to track it. It's hard to see it. So this is where your issues are, okay? Um, and Creo Chamber is a good channel for winter creepy music, not sponsored. <laughs> Thank you, Iman. So that's the issue that you have here. So if you don't, remember in that video, Why Your Drawings Suck, I talk a lot about not using reference. And a couple of my students today brought up the same issue. They, they talked about how they grew up with this, this, um, this, uh, taboo but anytime you bring up reference anytime art should be done 100 percent no reference it's just the most ridiculous most destructive thing i've ever heard because if you don't have reference you really are gambling with the construction and the realism of your image why would you do that why would you gamble away the quality you're representing Scientists use protractors, uh, scientists use rulers. It's not a measure of their ability to understand their science that they use lines and construction and, 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 and tools to limit human error. Reference limits human, human error, write that back to me. Um, so when you are maximizing human error, you're not representing your real skill. So whoever started that whole reference is bad is a complete dumbass. And based off my research, um, it goes back to Hollywood. There was a time in Hollywood where there was no photoshopping. It was any poster you've ever seen in a movie, in a, in a movie pre like 1960s, I don't know, 1980s, let's say, before any kind of computer generated, photography generated uh, um, stuff, you, all movie posters were painted. So they were just hand painted. Yep, they had this amazing artists, all the great artists, if they wanted to, moved over to Hollywood and started working for studios to make posters, movie posters. So they had to learn to draw realistically. And part of the competition between each studio is that, oh, our artists are super skilled. They don't need reference. Frazetta himself used to talk about how he never used reference. Frazetta, that's bullshit. He used it, he had a model, he had a favorite model actually. And he had constant um, uh, interaction with her for his uh, for his illustrations. So it's 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 a lie. And every artist that has ever lived has used reference. Michelangelo and Da Vinci actually opened up cadavers to learn about the human body. So enough of this bullshit with whole with the whole references are taboo and we shouldn't use references and skilled artists don't use references. And then and let me finish it off by saying what I said to my student earlier today. <clears throat> uh, if you were the type of person who could record a photo perfectly that you don't need to look at it again after seeing it initially, you've recorded all the information you need, so all the lines, all the measurements, that's, a, that's an actual um, disability that some people have. It's, their brain is on this override aspect. I forget what it's called. I don't know if it's Asperger's. I'm not sure if it's, I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm probably all wrong. What's the disease called? Um, it's a mutation of that disease, I guess. Um, and uh, uh, is it is it is it the it's like Rain Man? You know, I'm just trying not to be insensitive about about it. But you basically become disabled because it's the only thing your brain can do. Like pouring a cup of coffee is an impossibility. You just don't know how to do something like that anymore. So the human brain has never been able to maintain and manage that much information after looking at a, a, a reference one time. So really, stop it. Shake off the guilt. This is immature at this point. It's ridiculous at this point. Autistic, autism. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry. I said the wrong thing. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a form of autism. So it's not, it's, it's just, it's not how a brain is intended to function, let's say. So again, shake this crap off. This is ridiculous. You need references. Your art will suck without it. All right. My art will suck without reference. Write that back to me.
So that's what I'm going to be fixing today. And um, that was the whole thing behind Portrait Studio is that I was just tired of trying to find references. I was, I was tired of that, um, um, you know, that, 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 that whole mentality behind it. So I, I just, there's nothing more important than, than the artist's ability to have their mannequin there to make sure that you are not subjecting yourself to unnecessary um, uh, uh, mistake making. And then I think you're showing way too much side boob at this point. She's about to have a nip slip. And then you can see how the shoulders, let's go back to, I don't think I can liquefy. Um, the shoulders and the breasts, all of this, follow my brush, are all supposed to be on the same perspective line. There is no skewed perspective at this point because it's too high off the camera. There's no foreshortening here. And then the shoulder is okay because it seems a bit more appropriate now to the to the rotation. And um, she is a thinner character, so I wouldn't give her a bigger bust, but I would try to at least show the shoulder of the other side. Mm -hmm. that alone. And I think that was the most glaring issue you had here. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to... Correct the rib cage because we just don't want that completely jutting out. Okay, and then trying to fix that side boob situation. Like I get it, you know, it's pin up. All league art is pin up, really, but that was just excessive. So darken because it doesn't feel like a natural, normal shirt. It just looks like it's a forced. Uh, side boob that's to the point where you're undressing her. Sorry about my table. It's starting to creep again. And then I'm going to just work on where the light is coming from because it's the, the point is is that this this chest line is now part of the character's focal point point the point is see the high point of the breast is where the shadow starts because that's where the light is starting to get rejected and then I'm just going to clean that up so that looks a lot more realistic now as for your composition it's a league splash. It's so, or it's with within the 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 the, the aesthetic of, of league splashes. So I'm gonna go ahead with the silhouette. Um, I would rethink this handle. It looks just a little bit phallic. I'm not even making a joke here. Sometimes it happens. It's something we artists are constantly having to make sure we don't accidentally do. It just straight up looks phallic at this point, um, which is okay. It happens. <laughs> we all come from one. They're not that bad, but you know, just don't have them in <laughs> unintentionally handled. You know, with a hand, like with a literal hand on it. Um, and then down to the knee. Now oh, let me try that again. That was bad. That is a rough area anyway. So right now your composition is boring. Can anyone tell me why the composition feels flat? What? Basically, this is something I need to teach you guys as well. How do you find out if things aren't working in your illustration? You guys ever asked yourself that question? Like, okay, fine, I want to fix it, but I just don't see it. How do I see it as the rack? How do I see when my illustration is feeling distracting? I don't feel distracted. It's my illustration. I actually like what I chose. Who here experiences that? Who here is like, I actually don't see what everybody's talking about. I like what I did. I know there's something wrong with it and everyone's complaining. I just can't figure it out for my own. 
And the way to stop doing that, the way to stop uh, being too comfortable with your illustration that you don't know when you're actually having composition issues or focal point issues, because again, it's the same question. How do I know I have a focal point issue if I'm, if I'm okay with my illustration? Like, how do I know that? And you know that because you find that out because um, when you look at your illustration, you kind of don't know what you're looking at, where what starts and where what ends. So the way to stop doing this, I um, don't know if I want to deselect, is to just zoom out. So let's zoom out. All right. Yep, this far. So I know what we're looking at. I know we're looking at two characters, but just along the side of the back character right here, just along her side, we kind of don't know what's going on because the value of the background is almost exact to the value of Vi, of the, the pink haired character. And then if it wasn't for this big purple thing that is not done yet, so her gun, if it wasn't for her gun, then we wouldn't, wouldn't really know what's happening with the foreground character either. And if not for that little bit of light in the background behind the character showing that you were intending on adding a silhouette, you were just too scared, um, we really wouldn't know what we're looking at. And you've got a big splotch of black for background, for a background object. Background objects are always desaturated and diffused and raised in brightness because we're trying to emulate, we're basically faking the perspective, the atmospheric perspective so that we can see these objects. And we darken foreground characters, especially in a back-to-back -back hero stance against the world, us against the world um, um, set up like that. So the way to see it is by zooming out. Can I really tell the difference between the background and my characters? And if the answer is no, it usually is with you guys, um, you need to fix it. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna lighten the background. Yes, this much, and I'm gonna saturate it. And then I'm gonna inverse and darken the foreground with levels. Just so, you know, I'm going in a little bit more and then I'll darken it with lightness on the saturation on that slider and then inverse again and you gotta you gotta be a bit heavy-handed you can't be a delicate little princess and then be scared of the, these sliders of these big changes when you need to do them you're talking about a league splash pinup hero stance I mean you're 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 asking basically for the whole thing um, you're already you've already set yourself up to use all of the epic lighting situations that you need to use in order to pull this off you haven't really set up a, a delicate little fine art partly partly lit room with a candle nearby and a dusk coming through the window and it's a character who's an anti-hero like a dostoevsky character and no you're talking about a gunslinging girl and another girl and it's a lead character so it's just like constant war and you're, it's a hero stance, so it's back-to-back, low-camera angle with the city around them, the city of, of, you know, the underground city, whatnot. So you're, you're not painting a delicate scene that requires a bit more mood and nuance. You're painting a pretty, like a pretty, we've seen this before in Marvel movies and stuff. It's nothing original, so go for it. Go for that complete um, thing. And then that green of that underground, from what I've seen from the show, I'm just going to use it. It could come in from behind, it could come in from uh, the foreground, and uh, I'm going to darken the character towards the lower half using a similar kind of, uh, I'll just stick to my safe blue for now, and uh, just darkening the characters from the foreground. All right, and then another thing I wanna do <clears throat> is just give these characters a bit more of a silhouette. And that'll feel a little bit more of like a complete illustration. And if you feel like the sides of the canvas are still too light, we have enough light that we've provided that we, we will have enough if you darken a little bit more. I darken too much at the top. Oh, that was still on the... So 
lactamers. Just a bit at the top and then more at the bottom. And then once you're done, um, just bring that eerie green to hang out on the lower half of the canvas if you feel like you need a bit more of that atmosphere. Okay, and then obviously we need our rim light because it's, 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 the, it's again, it's the league splash. I've talked about it. I've made a whole video. How do I make my work look like league? I've made a video about it. Um, and it's always coupled with cast shadow. Uh, sorry, um, silhouette, rim light, and uh, extremely bright background. So I'm raising my dodge tool all the way up and I'm just finding where these moments are in the illustration. I might just flatten the scene, but anywhere where you have, start with, by default, start with objects that are translucent. So anything that can have light shine through it and then work your way into solid objects. Start with the see-through stuff first or partially see-through stuff. Anywhere that's fuzzy, anything that can catch light, start with that. Probably should just use a basic brush, honestly. Because um, if you start with the solid objects, not every solid object is going to have rim light on it. And just start with the stuff you can you can manage and stay delicate, stay classic, classy. All right, stay stay a little bit more on the on the on the light handed side when it comes to when it comes to the thing uh, the, the the room light at least not the other not the other thing that i mentioned which was uh brightening brightening the background all right just where i can't talk today and a little bit on the shoulder just wherever the light might reach and you can break a lot of rules with this you don't have to follow the rules exactly you can let it you know sneak in at the end of the day it's still cartoony Still got an element of cartooniness to it. And then her nose can be a bit more pink. The faces that you're drawing, you need to do more studies, side view and recorder view and perspective. Um, they're a sign, they're just, they're, it's just a very obvious. You have very, very little experience in, with, with portraits in that department. You're trying illustrations a little too early. If you were my student, I would not let you do any illustrations till you did at least like 10 more through quarter views or 20 more through quarter view studies, which means like what, like three months of work and um, two months of work and uh, and along with the you know, side view, front view, just making sure you get everything where it needs to be. Let's add some glistening on this uh, PP over here. And... That should do, that should be enough for now. And then as for objects that might get a bit more light to them, I'm gonna switch to dodge tool. Be, again, be, be, be classy with this. Don't, don't be, uh, don't go overboard. So anywhere where we might have subsurface scattering on her, and on, in her braid, in the hair of the braid, in the hair of these bangs here. This um, Karen cut. Look how much we can do with just a little bit of reference, and I'll and I'll go back to. That's why I coupled it with the other piece I wanted to look at because there were pretty obvious issues with both sides. When you guys are doing low camera angle, looking up at a character, um, you guys seem to struggle a lot with your three quarter views. And um, I'm not 100% sure about, here, let me try it. I kind of want to darken, it might be a bit crazy, but I'm going to try it. Darken the lower half a little bit more of these two characters. It'll just make them feel, and then the green is still there, the eerie green of the surrounding environment is still there. As for how to fix the perspective. So <clears throat> let's start with her. Um, we see too much of the cheek. You're, you're basically saying, 
I'm just gonna fix the nose actually and then go back to the eye. You're basically saying if I shrink the nose enough, I won't have to put it into perspective. Doesn't work like that. You end up with a tiny little uh, Whoville citizen that has a weird little nose that's distorted and makes no sense. All right, so don't do that anymore. Go ahead with it. Put the nose into perspective. Paint the nose as if nobody's watching, all right? And uh, make all the mistakes you want with it. Stick the nose right up. Make it a piggy nose. Oh no, if I stick it up a little bit, it would be a little piggy nose. Oh no, people will laugh at me if I paint a little piggy nose. People won't care because they won't see the process of it. Just do it. So look how tiny your little nose was and it wasn't big enough to stand in the way. Look at how completely just demolished the other side because I don't care about it. The other side is behind. So I'm going to copy, go back to before the liquify, paste, and then I'll get the new nose, which will overlap, and then I'll be able to, it'll be big enough to overlap. Do you see that? And that's what makes it look realistic. You had a tiny little nose that you put out of the way. You didn't want anybody to, to think you were going to paint a big old nose. So you had to shrink it because, you know, uh-oh, you know, it might be too big. All right? You don't need to do that. Go for it. Make the nose uh, what you need to do in order for it to feel like it's in three-quarter view, which is a lot, a lot of work. You need to tilt it right up un, 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 without any shame. Like nobody's watching, show those little nostrils. And uh, I need to stack it in front of the other side. All right, and then I don't know why you've completely erased the far side of her face. She doesn't need that much shadow. All right, and then the rest of the a critique for her face is that her chin, her cheek is just a bit too chubby. But she is a younger character in this. So I'm just tucking that in. Okay, so let's look at the before and after for this face. And it's the same thing here. You really just gotta, you have to have faith that showing the nostrils is what's needed to show a face from low angle. Sorry, my screenshot is really low quality. Um, but you just, you have to show the nostrils. You can't draw a, a tiny, three-quarter view face from the side for a low angle head tilted back away from the camera. At one point or another, you're going to have to draw a nostril, all right? And you're going to have to do it, and you're just going to have to deal with it. I know you think nostrils are silly, but eventually you're just going to have to draw a nostril, all right? Um, so anyway, um, no, 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 I went all the way back. I have no idea why I did that. Um, All right, so here's the nostril before. Tiny little nose, so tiny. And here's after, feels a lot more natural. It feels like it's part of the tilt. Okay, and then um, for Vi's face, she feels like somebody punched her and so much that it caved the side of her head, the front of her head. So you need to, first of all, not do that, and second, just tilt the eyes so that they don't look like they are now sitting on the side of the head looking at the viewer. She's We're looking at the side view. We're, we're not seeing any of this stuff. We, we can't see the whole eyebrow because half the eyebrow is gone. Or most, more than half, most of the half of the, of the eyebrow is gone to the perspective. It's part of the, the, the shift. We don't see the length of an arm if it's pointing at a camera. Do you see the length of your arm if you're pointing it right at a camera? No, it shrinks. It becomes nothing. You only see a hand because the hand hides the arm, right? Same thing with the eyebrow. We don't see the eyebrow because it's some, you know, in, in, in a way pointing at the camera. And then uh, and with Vi, really most likely somebody did punch her in the face. 
And then the, the length of the head is too long. My, my, uh, my lasso is all wrong. And then there's also a, a bit of a perspective tilt. See what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? See how I'm, see how I'm taking the edge, the feather edge of my liquify and tucking it up. See how I'm making it seem like the cheek is actually holding up the eye? Do you see that? That's, that's how you make a character look like they've tilted their head away from the canvas, uh, away from the camera. Look at that. Okay. And then, uh, before, after. Alrighty. And then I'm just going to just clean up here. Give me a second. And then get dodge tool and mess with the nose a little just to give it that um, subsurface. Oop, that's too much. Just a touch. Okay. Um, paint like a Sirax watching. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, so now we've pretty much fixed everything. I think I messed something up here. Um, so if you paint like I'm watching, you're never going to paint again. And I just want to fix the hand, so I'm going to pop back into Portrait Studio. And basically, we see the, 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 the elbow pretty low, so we see the elbow down here but we, we just need to see a bit of the arm because it looks like the arm is just gone so all you really need to do look how simple that was and now it looks good i would make the arm go a bit higher look at that a little bit of reference goes a long way you had a gigantic super arm go go gadget arm in one and a tiny little Guide, like a bit of guidance from your reference and you fixed it. Doesn't take a lot. And then as for making the characters feel like they're more involved with the environment, you can grab some of that green. You can grab an environment white um, and just use it on the characters themselves. Maybe a green white. And um, so I just grabbed a green white and I'm just basically laying it on anything that might get the ambient light of the surrounding environment, making sure to restrict it only to objects that are actually receiving this light source. And you need a shadow off of his hair. So I'm just going to go into blur and then just make sure that that cast shadow is blurry. All cast shadows must be blurred. Write that back to me. Can't have a sharp cast shadow anywhere. You don't deserve one. You don't. That's not how it works. All right. You gotta earn that shit, and um, and most likely you don't need one. All right. And then a bit of that same ambient light just from the side to reveal this arm again. It's just a green white, and that's why I I I, I call colors like that like green white. I don't really say light green. I say green white on purpose because green is the ambience and white is the universal mixing together. Um, so that's how you should call colors. You know, that's how you should state them. You should understand their relationship with the environment. Same thing here. I'm going to grab this and just throw in some of that green white on things that need it, making sure it's only on things that are actually getting some of that. Um, and 
And as for the color correction, I don't like the colors that you've used very much. Um, I feel like the more monochromatic, not, not monochromatic, but the more balanced the colors are within a certain uh, film, you know, the atmosphere color, which is this underground world, this green world, it'll actually make things feel a lot better. Just a color layer on 11% opacity has managed to balance all the colors through a nice film. So all your reds have now gone through the green filter, so they're not too red. All the purples have gone through, so they're not too red, and they're still very cool and very purple. And it just feels like we're, we are underground, we are in that, that world. I can even erase it a little bit and it'll still feel super eerie. I'll bring that down. And then finally, I'll do those last little touches, those League of Legends touches, League of Legend. And then just amp up that brightness behind these two heroes. And uh, maybe just show where the breach is in the surrounding landscape just a bit to show where the light is coming through and the sky is visible through all of those buildings. Okie dokie boys and girls and then finally we're gonna bring in uh, the bloom. Any questions at all before I show you the before and after? So if you are interested in buying Portrait Studio, it will be on sale this December. If you don't want to wait that long, it's still a very affordable price compared to where it was when we first released it. Um, I've reduced the price since then just because I want to I want to keep it at a fair price. Um, but um, it it will be on sale at lower than it'll ever be year round, starting December sixteenth, I believe, mid mid December around the holidays, and it'll go into the new year. And I do this year, sale every year. Um, I hope you guys use it. I hope you find it as useful as I do. I have found a problem. I will fix the problem. And then I will say goodbye to you. So the shoulder is not silhouetted enough. This shoulder here. So I'm just going to knock it down a couple values. Because the shoulder does not feel very natural and it's part of her neckline so it's part of the pinup beauty neckline thing um, you could lighten her face by the way I'm just not really focused on portraits right now I'm just focused on the illustration but you could lighten her uh, her face a lot more so this whole thing here could go up Um, a shadow is what happens when an object that has light on it makes it makes a shadow on the object under or behind it. Hmm. Cast shadow must be blurred. What's a cast shadow? Cast shadow is when one object blocks the light for another object, so the other object can't get as much light in it. The, sh the cast shadow is in the shape of the object blocking the light. So it's a very unique kind of shadow. And it's an accessory shadow. You can add it in later once you've found um, you know, what you need. Uh, so core shadow shape contours all of that all of that information is, is is all over my channel so if you guys are having issues understanding like basic terminology there's the how to how to lighting um, video that I have there's um, uh, edges a uh, video on edges and understanding basic the, the necessity of using um, uh, understanding geometric form studies and blocking and using a blocking brush. I cover fundamentals throughout my channel. You just have to do a search and you'll get access to it. A video search, like a history search. Do you guys know how to do that? If you don't know you could do that, you could search through my videos on YouTube. All right, so let's take a look at the before and after. Making a league splash is very easy. Write that back to me if you are good at organization, um, if you understand the basic requirements of a silhouette. It is a very easy thing to do. Do not be fooled. 
it is a very easy concept to understand. It's just the same set of, of stuff, good referencing, good construction, managing your perspectives, managing all of that. It is a very easy thing to pull off. You made the background dark and the objects light. Not always a good idea when you're trying to show a background of an underground city that these characters always find themselves in peril in. You're trying to establish an environment here. Um, I'm just going to show how it's not just this. To see that line? It's just not a good idea. Yeah, I think that's better. And then I'm just going to blur that because it's in the background. If you understand the basic rules, background is blurred, um, uh, foreground is dark, background is light. How do I find these fundamentals, Estebrac? Well, they're all over my channel. Nearly every single video is named after exactly what I cover in that video. Um, and you can probably most likely find exactly what you're looking for within minutes. Okay, before, Dark background, mm -mm, mm -mm. unless you're going to throw a spotlight down on the two characters like this, which is so cheesy and kind of overdone and kind of Looney Tunes, you know what I'm saying? Like, unless you throw one of these on, and they're hard to manage because you have to cast a shadow off every single thing, and they're the very unique type of light source situation. We use it for introducing a villain into a scene or something like that. Um, it's not really about that hero turnaround Marvel characters looking at the city getting attacked and they're all backs against each other and it's only us, you guys. <laughs> okay, that kind of lighting, that kind of cheesy shit. We've seen it. There's a set number of rules. You got to follow them and that's how it is. So it's basic Hollywood, basic filmmaking. And, uh, and that's the only way you can have a dark background if you had a spotlight. But if you want that good shit, which is when you have a nice, clean, uh, open environment behind the characters, the characters are blocking the light, the light is assisting the characters, the characters look super fun and epic, and, um, and everybody is having a good time, and the characters are separate from the background and everything feels safe. Plus, the perspective is now a little bit more appropriate. Look at where the boobies were before. One was drooping. One was um, going another direction. Just a little bit of perspective also helped us fix the arm. Torso, the whole torso looked a little bit deformed. Um, now it just feels a little bit more anatomically correct. When you have deformations, anatomical issues like that, that they're noticeable. Anatomical issues act like focal point. Write that back to me. So they actually catch the eye. If something's done wrong, it catches the eye. And it doesn't feel right because we're just stuck there looking at it. And that whenever it, your viewer is stuck looking at something, that's a focal point. Um, like if they're trying to figure something out. That's why tangents are so bad because when two edges create an illusion um, or two corners meet an edge or a corner meets an edge, it creates an illusion. Um, they, we end up really confused and we end up looking at something longer than we should, taking our eyes away from the focal point. And then, of course, that green green film I added. Do you miss the, 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 the red before? No. Do you miss the colors that you had before the green color layer with the 10%, 11%? No. It helped because it made it feel like we were actually in this underground city. That makes no sense in the story because why would there be an underground city? And what's the rooftop? Is it sewage? Is it like a big underground sewer city? Where are the pillars keeping everything up? I don't understand how this even works. Um, is it like, is it like, is a big city, like, is the whole... The whole city a tube. I don't just I just don't get how they explain those things. It's not a cave. I mean, it's not a cave structure like in like in Troll Hunters, and we have an underground cave city. That makes sense. But I anyway, it's not fun watching shows with me. Um, but anyway, thank you everyone for coming today. So to recap on today's announcements, the community challenge is up. It's a really fun holiday, Christmassy, not really Christmas challenge. Um, it's wintry. You get to design your own little uh, familiar. Um, the apprentices have a very similar uh, assignment, but it's a bit more. It's a bit more fun. It's a bit more similar. Uh, it's a bit more uh, personal. It's kind of like a little personal um, final assignment of the year for my patrons, for my apprentices, um, just to kind of take a look at themselves and, and kind of uh, write a little journal about themselves through a an, an illustration. You guys have an actual character to design. 
But if you are interested in joining in as an apprentice, you can. You just go to istabrak.com and click on the uh, Patreon link here, uh, and it'll take you to um, where you can sign up either uh, you know for the apprentice tier or for the dollar tier. Anything is appreciated. Um, and uh, the assignment itself, the community assignment, is right here. It's really fun. Um, lots of glowing stuff, lots of wintry glowing stuff. It's still fall, I know. It's still Halloween. I don't care what anybody says. You don't just give like six months to summer and spring and and then, you know, August and 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 September for for harvest and then Halloween just gets like a week. It's still Halloween. But this is just for December. As soon as December hits and all that, we're gonna be really feeling that Christmas vibe. So um so get started on that so you could, you know, yeah, but it's still Halloween. And, um, and that's it. Thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate when you guys come to the, uh, the live streams. That means the world to me to have you guys present. Um, if you are looking for ways to be inspired, you can find me on Instagram. I share a daily sketch challenge there. It's really, really fun. You can also find me on my YouTube community. I share a lot of sketch challenges over there. It extends into the YouTube community. Um, so you just go to my YouTube channel, click on the community icon. I share my sketches now. I share all kinds of stuff. I'm trying to be a little bit more active through YouTube so they don't shadow ban me um, and, uh, and Instagram. So I'm really active through YouTube and Instagram if you are looking for a little bit more interaction with the, with the community, but definitely join the Reddit community if you can. And to get Portrait Studio, you just have to go to my store here and it will be on sale here starting uh, mid-December, lower than, 50, uh, than uh, $45, but right now it is at $45 um, if you're interested in grabbing it now. It's a great reference uh, development engine um, and uh, it will just pretty much answer all the questions you have with anatomy and perspective and you get control over the camera, the lighting, all in real time and you don't have to wait for it to bake. Thank you everyone for coming. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.